Hello everyone, today we want to discuss the comparison test. So in the last video we covered estimation theorems for the integral test, but today we want to cover the comparison test. So this is another test that we're going to be covering. So what have we covered so far? We have covered the integral test, we've covered the geometric series test, which is just determining if the um, common ratio is in between that negative 1 and 1 value that we like to see. And we've also covered the direct limit test where we just take the limit of a, of a series or of a sequence, really. And then we um, see if that equals zero or not. And we also did some telescoping series, which were very fun. But now we want to cover the comparison test. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit tricky. So this is where our tests for divergence or convergence really involve more proof-based, um, more abstract sorts of ideas. And we need to really apply our critical thinking skills. Our problem isn't going to be solved in one particular way or another. Um, to get to the right solution, you, there might be many ways that you can get there. And that's what's important about these new tests here. So um, let's get started just by defining what the comparison test is. So if we have two series, if we have the series of a sub n and the series of b sub n, and they're both positive, then um, if b sub n is convergent, and um, for all n, b sub n is greater than a sub n, then the series of a sub n also converges. So this is saying that if we have a series, so I can graph this out, I guess, if we have a series, we have a series a sub n. a sub n goes like that, or something like that. Um, and we find a series b sub n, and this b sub n is ever so larger than a sub n. So if we find the series b sub n, and in this, in this converges, that series b sub n goes to zero. And that b sub n series might be something that we can really easily check. Um, well, then we have a series that converges. Then we can prove that our a sub n converges because our b sub n is always going to be greater. But if we determine that um, b sub n is less than a sub n and b sub n diverges, well, then if a sub n is always greater than b sub n, then we know that a sub n is also going to diverge because it needs to be greater than b sub n for all n. So that's kind of how that works. That, 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 that should be fairly, fairly reasonable for many of you to imagine. So let's do an example, and I really want to do a harder example here. Um, this one is not actually um, from, Stuart's, from Stuart's book for once. Um, we're going to be using a different example. I don't know why that stayed over from the last video. But um, anyways, in this one we want to cover... Um, this series here. And this looks a little bit nasty, if you ask me. So um, we want to determine whether the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n sine squared of 5n over 4n plus, over 4 to the n plus cosine squared of n converges or not. Okay, well, how are we even going to deal with this thing? So what we want to do first is we want to make a reasonable guess. What do we think is going to happen to this series? Well, the contributions from the trigonometric functions, the sine squared and the cosine squared, are always going to be positive because we're squaring the result. We're squaring whatever the output of those functions are. Now, in addition, the functions of sine and cosine, they have ranges between negative 1 and 1. But because we're squaring them, it's really going to be between 0 and 1. So no matter how big those ends get, the contributions from these trigonometric functions is going to be really small. It's really only going to be at maximum 1. So the dominating terms here are going to be these exponentials, this 2 to the n and this 4 to the n. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to isolate that. We're going to make that our b sub n for now. And we are going to just see if that converges. So b to the n is going to be 2 to the n over 4 to the n. And that's really easy to see that that's a geometric series of 1 half to the n. 
So now we know that the series of b sub n is really the series between n equals 0 and infinity of 1 half to the nth power. And this is a geometric series, and r equals 1 half. So from this, we can determine that we're going to converge. This series converges. So that's a reasonable guess that our series is going to converge as well. Okay, well now we actually need to set up the comparison. So to set up the comparison, we need to make sure that the series that we're comparing it with is actually going to be always larger than the series on the top that we're being asked about. So first we're going to play around with the numerator. So to play around with the numerator, to assume that it's larger, we're going to assume that the numerator is going to be big. So we're going to assume that the sine function takes the largest possible output. So that's going to be 1, because the sine squared, the maximum of a sine squared is going to be, or the maximum of a sine is going to be 1. We get to 1 at our sine function. So we're going to assume it's 1. So that means that um, if we assume big, then our numerator is always going to be less than this 2 times 1 to the n. That 1 is the contribution from sine squared which is really 2 to the n. So we, now we have 2 to the n. Um, so this means that 2 to the n sine squared of 5n over 4n, um, we got a plus sign there, um, plus cosine squared of n is always less than um, 2 to the n over 4 to the n plus cosine squared of n. All right, so let's continue working on this series. And now we're going to work with the denominator. So we're going to assume that the denominator is small. Because that ensures that if this guy is big, to ensure that this is the biggest possible series that we're dealing with, um, we are going to assume that it's being divided by the smallest possible number um, so that we are dealing with a, a function, or so that we are dealing with, a, with the largest possible series. Okay, so if we assume small, then we are going to take the cosine squared of n to be 0, because that's the smallest in magnitude. That's the smallest um, contribution that the cosine squared of n could give, is a 0. So 4 to the n plus cosine squared of n is always going to be greater than 4 to the n plus 0. Okay, so now from this, we can construct a sort of... Um, a sort of example here where we have all of our series and our different contributions. So um, 2 to the n sine squared of 5n plus or over 4 to the n cosine squared of n is less than 2 to the n over 4 to the n cosine squared of n is less than um, 2 to the n over 4 to the n. That's the largest. That's the largest case. Um, that's the other case that we've determined um, up on top. And then this is our series. So we've determined that all of them are going to be um, larger than, than one another. Okay, so with that proven, now we can take the, um, we can just take the, the series um, here which we know converges, and we know now that it's larger 